welcome. So on this channel, I offer yoga practices that are anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. And then also these yoga tips videos where you can write in and either comment or email me through my website, BethGrahamWellness.com and ask a yoga question, a yoga alignment question. So if you're new, go subscribe so you get more of this content to deepen your yoga practice. So this question came from TM, the initials I'll use of the student, and she said, what do I do about my shoulders and down dog? Because mine are very flexible. So I notice shoulders a lot in group classes and there's this tendency to want to broaden the collarbones and open the chest. And many students, what they do is they jam their chest back towards their legs. So they get this expansive feeling in the chest but what happens is the shoulder girdle gets a little compressed or jammed, I'll use that word again, and the upper back doesn't have spaciousness, it isn't broad. So let me show you here. So downward facing dog is a posture with your arms up and over your head. So if you reach your arms up and then pull your arms back and press or Feel as if you're thrusting your chest forward. This is what I'm meaning. This is what I'm seeing in classes. And you can also see how the back hammocks and the front core isn't engaged. So join me, stand on your mat or stand on the floor. You really don't need a mat right now. And press the palms up to the ceiling. Keep your biceps by your ears. You'll hear me say this in down dog. And then lengthen your tailbone down and pull your front ribs in. And you'll feel engagement of the front belly. You might also feel upper inner thighs, the base of the core engaging. Okay, so let's release that. So downward dog is arms overhead and it's a forward hinge at the hip. So it's a forward folding posture. If you really want to study more about it, it's in my online courses on forward folding yoga postures. So in down dog, we hinge forward at the hips and you can watch me first and then go back and practice along. But you hinge forward at the hips and then the arms are overhead. So you'll reach forward with your arms as you flex your palm. And then here, what you want to feel is yourself reaching your sits bones back and pulling your lower belly in. Okay, let's come up if you're down or if you were watching, you got to study it briefly. So what's going on with the arms in downward dog? It's an external rotation of the upper arm in the shoulder girdle. So this would be internal rotation and this would be external rotation. So how do we do that with our arms overhead and applying weight onto our hands? So reach your arms forward so your palms face up and then lift your arms up. Keep hugging your upper arms in and then flip your palm. So you're hugging your upper arms in and you're working to bring the crease of the elbow back. So I mean to the back of your mat. So let's do that again. Arms forward like you're holding a tray. Lift them up and then flip your palm and hinge forward. Reach back through the hips, pull your navel in, look down and hug your upper arms together. And notice how broad your back feels. Okay, so that's the beginning of down dog. So how do you build that strength, especially if you're really flexible in the shoulders? I'll show you. So there's a couple ways. You can first start with a puppy pose with blocks. And some of this is so you can build this 
awareness or this body proprioception. So you can understand in other postures what it's meant to feel like in down dog. So with two blocks, you'll bring your elbows onto the blocks and you'll bring your hips directly over your knees. So here you can feel, I'm taking my hands and feeling my upper back and feeling how the shoulders are quite stable. Pull your chin in slightly, press your elbows down and pull your navel in. Keep pressing elbows down, pull belly in and just feel the strength of the posture. Give yourself a few more moments to practice here. And then come out of this slowly. So start to walk your knees towards your blocks and you'll make your way up. So I said come out of this slowly, carefully, because the shoulder is a very sensitive joint. It's been called a pseudo joint because it's the clavicle, the upper arm, and the shoulder blade, the scapula. It's not a steady joint like the hip, the ball and socket joint, because our hips are meant for us to run and walk and transport us, right? The shoulder is meant to bring things to us. It's got a different function, so we need to respect that. All right. So the next piece is, let's come into dolphin pose. Dolphin pose, you'll really be able to work on the upper back and the strengthening of the shoulders as well. So I like practicing dolphin with prayer hands and elbows under my shoulders. You might like to interlace your hands, so it's your choice, but it's elbows under shoulders and I notice that a lot of times students bring elbows too wide. So check your alignment. And then curl your toes under and lift your hips into dolphin. So in dolphin, press down with your outer wrist. And just notice by doing that, and you can watch me, notice I'm hanging out in dolphin, I'm not working. Now when I press my outer wrists and forearms down, look how I lift out of the shoulders. And then you might need to walk your toes up a little if you haven't. And then you can even bend your knees slightly and lift your sitting bones up. Pull your lower belly in and notice when you do that, pull your ribs in from your shirt, how you come forward, meaning forward on your mat and you feel more strength in the shoulders. Relax the head, the ears are between the upper arms and then just take an inhale. Press down with the arms and an exhale. And then bring your knees down to the mat and walk your hands back to your legs. Okay, so that's dolphin pose which can start to build some awareness and some strength in the shoulders. So we just held it for a few seconds. But if you want to build that strength, and especially if you've got a lot of mobility, a lot of flexibility, then building strength is important. So I would say set a timer, breathe through it for three minutes. If that feels like way too much, then maybe try a minute or 30 seconds. So find an increment and start working up, okay? All right, so the next one is actually downward facing dog pose. And you might really wanna watch when I first show it to you because that is the, the no, what we don't wanna do. All right, so I like to start off in high plank pose to really remind my body that this practice is one of engagement firming muscles. So press them out away with the hands, root down with your pointer finger and thumb, and pull your front core in. From here, hike your hips up to the ceiling. And then if you're new to yoga or your hamstrings feel a little tight, you might want to bring your feet a little wider. Otherwise, 
the big toe mounds are six inches apart. So I'm going to just hang out in down dog and not do anything and press my chest towards my legs. Okay, you can see this. I'm bringing my head towards my knees. This is what we don't want to do. So I'm going to have you come forward, look forward to the top of the mat as I am, and then rotate the crease of the elbows forward so the pointy part of your elbow moves back. Drive the mat away with your hands as if you're trying to press it forward, and then come back in your down dog. You're going to come back as far as your ears line up with your upper arms. And then look at either your ankles, depends on your neck, your knees, or maybe draw your gaze up your thigh. Keep hugging your upper arms in. So you want to feel your outer armpits rotate down to the floor so you feel this wrapping around sensation in your upper back. Draw your navel in and feel yourself using your thigh muscles to press the top of the thigh bone back. And then give yourself a number of breaths here and like I said in dolphin, you can build up staying for 30 seconds, maybe a minute, maybe three minutes. And then you'll release down to the floor. All right, so in down dog, it is this anterior tilting forward of the pelvis. And then you're pulling your front core in. What happens when you pull your front core in is it brings you forward slightly in your shoulders. So if you're very mobile in your shoulders, notice what's happening here in your back and pull your belly in. So I hope that helps. If you have a question, comment below or send me an email. And then also check out my online courses. Yoga is a study. We're meant to study it and then we practice when we take a class or do a YouTube class. And if you're curious about this mat, I know it doesn't look um, quite designer, stylish, pretty, but I have been practicing on this mat for 21 years. That's the quality. And the mat is on my online courses, the free course about um, yoga props, essential yoga props. So until next time, enjoy your practice and have a fantastic day. Namaste.